Hi, brothers. This is Nick Rizzi, the Rocky, Rocky Mountain RVP, here with Jack Paley, more importantly, our guest and co-founder of Oliver Charles. Jack, let me start this by saying you look fantastic in that sweater today. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm doing great. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this, share a little bit more about myself and my story. Heck yes, let's, uh, let's jump into that story. I had to comment on the sweater because it looks good, but you are a brother who's built a business out of something you had previously not known anything about, right? Tell me, tell me a little more about Oliver Charles and what you and your co-founder Slater are doing. Sounds great. Um, to begin, just what Oliver Charles is, uh, we are a sweater brand, new sweater brand we just launched about a month ago. And what we do is we 3D knit these amazing sweaters from the soft, versatile underbelly fiber of high elevation yak. So we tried to find two things that we were really excited about, both in the materials and the production space to create these sweaters. And something uh, that we never thought we'd be doing is making sweaters, making clothing in general. Uh, both my co-founder and I are kind of historically uh, self-proclaimed unfashionable people. <laughs> so this is a big surprise to us. So it's taken a lot of conversations, a lot of Googling, but over the last nine months or so, we've come a long, long way to actually produce these sweaters and build a community of folks who are interested in our brand and product. That's amazing. Now, I was doing a little bit of research and it's not just a product that you're selling here, right? Tell me a little bit about that feeling that we get when we buy an Oliver Charles and why that's important. <laughs> sure, yeah, that's, that's a really important uh, aspect of our brand to myself and my co-founder. It's a uh, psychology that we discovered and since then we really can't stop thinking about. It's called enclosed cognition and what that really boils down to is the way that clothes make us feel. So it's no surprise that when we find things that we love to wear, they feel good to wear, we feel authentic wearing, that we feel more confident, ready to take on the day, and just simple in our, in our you know, journey throughout the day. So we kind of have been touching on that psychology to make something that not only looks good, but feels good to wear and can be worn in just tons of different scenarios from working to interviewing to really just lounging on the couch or going out with friends in, uh, in a, a future world, I suppose. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I think especially now when uh, everybody started uh, in lockdown and you, you kind of fell into the habit of maybe wearing PJs every day, that enclosed right. cognition is, is something that I really think can help out and help put your mind in a better place as well as your body. Yeah, it's a really interesting point. And uh, just one thing I'll plug is on our website under the tab hashtag repeat, which is sort of our philosophy on repeating styles that you love to wear. Um, we have a blog post about how work from home has impacted folks' wardrobes and how you can kind of hack your wardrobe with more simplistic, higher value clothes to you know feel better while working throughout the day at home. So if you're interested in that topic, we'd love for you to check it out. That's awesome. And we'll try and include a link in this article as well, or, or put it somewhere at the bottom. Sure. So Jack, tell me a little bit more about how this started. I mean, you didn't grow up weaving, right? How, how did you learn <laughs> to make a sweater? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, so all of our sweaters are knit. They're, they're 3D knit over in Brooklyn, uh, New York. But to get hands-on with the materials and to kind of learn how certain things combined and washed together, uh, what, what they felt like after they were kind of brought into a full garment, my co-founder and I very early in this process learned to hand weave. Um, it was a really random turn of events where we just wanted to so badly get hands-on with these things we were learning about and kind of put them to our own test to see if they you know, met the standards that we were talking about, if they really were as soft or antimicrobial as we've heard about. So we got lucky uh, in two ways. One was there was an amazing teacher in the Bay Area, just right across the bridge. I, I don't know if I mentioned that, but I'm in the Bay Area <laughs> um, in San Francisco. And our instructor ended up being in Oakland where we took a eight hour class on just one Monday with her, where she brought us through the entire process of setting up a loom, um, which is the big contraption behind me. If you're not familiar with it, it's what you can use to create, you know, um, uh, compacted, I guess, garments. 
And then her friend and the other stroke of luck was so interested in what we were working on that she donated the loom behind me, which she purchased originally in 1970. So there's a ton of history. It's like a very traditional craft uh, weaving. It gave us a ton of uh, insight into the materials. And it was just a very, for, like personally, it was a very cool thing to learn. I, I, I love being crafty. It's part of who I am. So I, I love that aspect of our of our story is learning to create things with our own hands um, to learn how to weave. <laughs> it was wild. That's so cool. So just to summarize this, Jack, to, to make sure I've got this right. So you found someone through, through your ingenuity uh, network and stroke of luck, you found someone who acted as a mentor to help kind of bring you into this, this ancient art that everybody needs because we need clothes, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's spot on. Uh, we met somebody who taught us how to do it and we were given the resources to do it. And then it was just a lot of trial and error to be able to create something, but there's a ton of history. There's almost limitless potential in what you can create on a loom as far as a garment goes. So such a cool education, really. That's awesome. I, I have to say, I really love this aspect of, of your story probably the most, because I, I think nowadays, especially with what we've been exposed to, when we, when a student thinks entrepreneurship, when we think entrepreneurship, we think like an app and you need a code and you need Facebook or manufacturing. And those are things that you will need eventually, but that's, that's not necessarily what a business is. You can go start a business off of anything and you've got mentors and people to teach you and YouTube and you don't need it to be an app uh, there's, there's millions of other things that you can start to be entrepreneurial yeah I, I couldn't agree more with you i think there's a lot of right paths for a lot of people so um if you have the background or the resources to create a uh, software an app whatever it will be uh i think it makes perfect sense uh, but there are there are alternatives um, to to doing that path which is you know more physical consumer goods. Uh, it could be something that you create in your own kitchen or you know you work with somebody to physically create, but there's a lot of potential in bringing your ideas to life in that route. I, I absolutely love that. That's awesome. And I have a ton of respect for, for you and people like you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're launching this huge release. You can't make it all on the loom in the office that you're sitting in. So what did that yeah. look like when you went out to go and find manufacturing? How did you evaluate your partners or even find that? How'd you start? Well, sort of like everything else, it starts with just a ton of Googling. Um, we put together a big <laughs> sheet of yeah, just hundreds of um, manufacturers. We didn't know anything about manufacturing at that time, and we're still learning a ton. So we were kind of playing around with two types of, you know, not to get too into details, but two types of manufacturing. One is called cut and sew, which is, you know, big panels of fabric that they cut and sew together. It's what you know, most things are made out of. And then there was this cool new-ish technology called uh, whole garment, which is 3D knitting which we were really interested in, um, not only because it was sort of like akin to 3D printing, where it created a sweater in one entire piece, but also because it sort of has this story behind it um, in a, really two interesting things about it. One, one story is that it's allowing a lot more US manufacturing to exist on this kind of um, you know, knitwear scale, because the, the ability to create these sweaters with a single machine has like greater efficiency than large warehouses with, with a ton of people. And then on the other side, it's super interesting because when it removes seams from the process of creating a sweater, it creates a more durable product that has um, you know, a more natural uh, fit and shaping to, to a body. So it's kind of like this superior manufacturing process that we were able to discover and learn a ton about. And then once we got to that point, it was just about talking with the different people who were uh, manufacturing in that style, learning what they could do uh, if they were interested in working with us. We're, we're still so small, <laughs> you know, we, we, we're just really, you know, taking what we can as far as, um, working with folks, but, but we're still so small that we wanted to find somebody that would help us grow and that we, if we did grow, could grow with them. Um, so we found Tailored Industry, which 
I'd be happy to tell you more about if, if you're interested in learning um, more about who we work with and wh why they're so special to us. That's awesome. Yeah. And that process of finding a partner that you can use and that you can trust, I'm, I'm sure right. was huge and stressful and probably still ongoing, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it is. They've, they've been fantastic though. Um, they really, I think, believe in what we're working on and want to, want to see us succeed. So uh, that's, that's key to us right now is just finding folks who, who want to be part of this experience with us. That's awesome, Jack. So now we know where you're at today. Let's take it back a little bit and sure. uh, tell me more about your Delta SIG experience. I understand you went to the University of Northern Carolina, uh, North Carolina, excuse me. What yeah. was that like? When, when did you join? How did you join? Why? And what was your experience while you were there? Sure. Uh, so I was telling you a little bit about this, but I'll, I'll sort of re repeat it because I think it's an important story. Um, so I went to UNC, but I'm originally from Colorado. And I'm not sure if folks are super familiar with UNC, but it, they, they don't have a ton and ton of out-of-state students. It's got a very big in-state population. It's a you know state school. Um, so when I went out there, I just didn't have, you know, like a immediate community and, you know, I felt kind of like lost alone and wanting to be part of something, you know, wanting to meet new people and then also just get more involved with the campus. So DSP was the opportunity to do that. And I rushed in my freshman year. Actually, I remember that I, I rushed the first semester and they told me like, sorry, we, we, you have to wait until your second semester. I don't know if that's a general rule or you know specific to them, but, but I came in twice. I was super excited about it. And then throughout all of college, it was a great opportunity for me to meet people from you know, all different walks of life who you know, were interested in this idea of business, which I kind of boil down to. We're interested in like, building new things. We're interested in researching how things worked, you know, in like an, an economic perspective. And I was also super interested in those topics. So it was like a match made in heaven where I got to meet awesome people every year. I got to, I'm still in touch with a ton of them too. And, you know, I just like, I just think the community aspect of it, you know, without rambling too much further, the community aspect of it is just had, has been and still is amazing for me. That's awesome. Every time I have this conversation, it always boils down to, to the brotherhood, to the community, to, to having that network in a spot where you yeah. might not yeah. normally. Right. Oh, that's so cool. Um, I, I love to hear that. And now, I mean, here you are back. You, we uh, found you for an interview with, with, uh, with the Delta Sig magazine and, and it's continuing. And I mean, it's my hopes and goals that this is shared 10 million times and Oliver Charles quickly becomes the biggest sweater brand on planet Earth because of this, this interview here. <laughs> me too, me too, yeah, yeah. I, I, th I think it will. We have the potential. Okay, for everybody <laughs> watching, that's your challenge. You share this with two or three people and uh, pass along the Oliver Charles story. Uh, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm excited that you all um, were able to recommend that we like get on the phone like this and you know go over you know what, what we've been building with Oliver Charles it's it's sort of been in some capacity isolating um, not being able to get in front of folks to talk about our sweaters have them try them on and feel them um, with, with COVID with the pandemic so this has been you know a really neat opportunity for us to just explain a little more about what we've been working on and why why we love what we're doing. And I think for me, I, the coolest aspect of this and, and meeting you now is we can watch your company grow from the ground level, which I, I think is really <laughs> cool. Um, we have brothers in our fraternity who, you know, we've had the, uh, gosh, v, as senior vice president in Visa or, or very close to the top at Visa and some major, major uh, international corporations, as well as much smaller business. And I, I just think that's really cool that this is, this is a chance to watch you grow and, and hopefully help. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope the same. <laughs> I can't, can't argue with you there. If we're, if we're a bigger company in the next year, I'll be, I'll be very happy. I love it. Jack, my last question for you, for everyone watching, uh, maybe alumni who, who have graduated and are looking to follow in, in similar footsteps in terms of launching or uh, brothers that are maybe just initiated and, and they want to be an entrepreneur as well. 
what's been your biggest takeaway? I'm sure you'll get more, but what's been your biggest takeaway in launching this process that, that you want to share that other people need to know that maybe you flopped on your face and you want them to avoid, or maybe you picked up very quickly and, and uh, they need to do the same. What, what do you think that one piece of advice is you'd like to boil down and share? Yeah, it's, I'm sure it's there's a, a great, lot. Just one today. It's a great, <laughs> no, it's a great question. It's a tough question to answer, um, and I would love to be a resource if anybody has specific questions. Um, I can pass on my email if that's if that's a possibility. Uh, one takeaway I think that is bigger than any takeaway is for me. This is maybe personal, so it might not apply to everybody. But for me, it has been find somebody that you love to work with that brings a different skill set to the table that can you know that's just as passionate about what you're working on that's in a similar stage of life that really feels similarly to you about going after an idea and building it because it's a long journey and there's inevitably roller coasters of good and bad so working with somebody you trust respect uh, you know brings a lot to the business is absolutely key if i was to boil it down to one one thing i don't know there's there's a ton of other good takeaways but you know like i said please reach out i i like talking with new folks starting new businesses or working on existing ones all of it is awesome so i'd love to be a resource or just meet new folks if they're interested in me and me <laughs> heck yes and jack we'll make sure to put all of your contact info and links um, in the, the description of this video as well but in the meantime, where's the best place to go buy an Oliver Charles sweater? The best place to go buy an Oliver Charles sweater, and I'll give you the link, is our Indiegogo campaign, where we are taking pre-orders and is where we launched our sweaters. Uh, we're about a month into it. We're gonna continue running it at least until the end of the month. So if nothing else, visit and learn a little bit more about what we've been working on. Uh, I think you can attest we have a, a pretty funny video that you can watch too. So give it a, give it a watch. Um, and if you have any questions, as I mentioned, you know, please reach out. Happy to be available. I love it. Big thank you to Central Office for setting this up with Jack. Definitely. And a huge thank you to Jack Paley, the co-founder of <laughs> Oliver Charles. Thanks so much, And Jack. thank you. Thank you. This has been a very exciting, great opportunity for me. So thank you so much. I love it.